Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Alex and today I'm going to talk about an interesting topic and that is retro video games. Retro video games has been something of a newer phenomenon, although I won't call it completely new, of a lot of old video games coming back into the limelight and people going back and collecting them, or playing them, or buying retro or retro redesigned consoles to be able to play these old games we're talking games back from 20 or 30 years ago uh, particularly the 1980s and 90s uh, in particular that seems to be the area of focus of where these games are are made and that there has been a, a resurgence of interest in these games as one would look at historical movies now this game here age of empires is a very unique and special game uh, that i picked up when i was a teenager back in the day and this game was extraordinarily complex for me at the time i think it's probably still extraordinarily complex for me today as a lot of the uh, combat systems are very intricate you know there's multiple layers in the world and different spells and armies and dealing with cities and things like that of course as one gets to use it more and more they become more familiar with it it becomes a little more intuitive but at first you get completely snowballed uh, this is one example of a retro video game that I think is worthwhile to go back and play again analyze see where we've come and how far we've gone but going back to the general topic of retro video games why has there been such a huge resurgence in interest in retro video games? Well, first of all, the term retro video games is not a very good term. You know, when we talk about movies, we don't say we watch retro movies. Or we don't say we listen to retro music. Really, the term retro, which is sort of retroactive, is only really applied to video games as a medium. If we were to talk about movies, we could say, okay, I am interested in a certain genre. Or if we're talking historically, we'll say, okay, I'm interested in of movies of a certain director, like, say, Orson Welles. Or in, I've had an interest in Japanese movies, I still do, of like directors such as Kenzi Mizuguchi um, and several others. But when it comes to video games, though, where does one draw the line of where retro video games are? You know, does the dividing line end in the 16-bit era or the 32-bit era? Or we get out of the cool bits area? Okay, now are we in the 2000s? Or do we go in the 2010s? Where is the demarcation line between what's a retro video game and a modern video game? That is a very fluid line. <laughs> Uh, for some people, a retro video game goes back to games of the NES era. Or like a game here, uh, Age of Wonders, games in the 1990s and early 2000s. But everyone has their own definition of what's a, what a retro video game is. Yeah? And that kind of makes it a difficult topic to talk about. Basically, the only thing that we can gr agree as a player base of what retro video games are is actually what they're not. They're not new. They're not a new game and they're not on a triple A console and they're not on a high end PC and they're not on the current generation. That is about the only area of agreement where we stand with what a retro video game is. Now for a retro video game, one of the key things is why do we go back and look at them? Why do we play them? I gave one example here of well, maybe we want to go back and look at retro video games just to see how far we've come in a genre. As you can see here with Age of Empires 2, it's pretty manual. I'm doing a lot of clicking. I'm moving around trying to do things uh, like simple unit commands that, you know, uh, would in some cases be automated or be a little bit easier as we've seen in later games. Uh, even Age of Empires 2 and 3 are more recently a game that I played quite a bit, uh, Endless Legend. You know, much better and easier and frankly more intuitive control system than we see here in Age of Empires. I'm not one that goes back and talks about the good old days. I don't believe in the notion of the good old days. I think if one starts talking about the good old days, 
we're talking through rose tinted glasses. The quote, good old days had a lot of challenges of their own back at that time period. It's just the situation has changed. And a lot of times maybe our perspective has changed, you know, as we become more experienced or maybe grown older and we have more exposure or a different set of experiences that we could draw upon to analyze something that we see in front of us. So for a retro video game, it's different than another medium. Let's say we would talk about a classical movie, which I guess in movie parlance would be a retro movie. If one was to go back and see a movie, let's say for example, 2001, a classic, the classic science fiction movie, still great to this day. You're looking at about three hours of your life to watch this movie. It is a bit slow, but it's a very deep and in some ways transformative movie. And then one can talk about it at length. When one listens to classical music, you're spending a few minutes. You can listen to a piece and you can listen to a piece over again. With a video game, however, it's a different story. You're not spending a couple minutes or up to a few hours of your life. You could be talking about a major chunk of time to play a retro video game fully. Particularly if it's a genre like an RPG or maybe a very in-depth strategy game like you see here with Age of Wonders and you go through the uh, main campaign. You're going to be looking at somewhere around 40, 50, or 60 hours. That is a pretty large commitment of time, which could be used on, say, modern games, or just something even out of gaming in general, or maybe reading a book, or whatever. So, going back and playing a retro video game, I think for all of us, we don't really go back and play the retro game all the way through. But rather, we go and we taste the experience of that retro video game, but we don't deep dive into it and complete it all the way through. A lot of time there's play mechanics that don't exist in the game that we've now come taken for granted. One of my favorite games of all time when I was growing up was Dune 2, the building of a dynasty. But Dune 2 didn't have the snap box uh, unit select uh, to uh, select all your units. It was a real-time strategy game. And you had to pick each unit individually. And holy cow, I think I've worn out like two or three mice back in the day, selecting each and every individual unit. Would I like to play Dune 2? Absolutely. But I require some of the uh, control functions I see in modern RTSs. Or again, going back here to Age of Wonders, you could see me you know, struggling with these uh, kind of management screens for the cities and I'm having to hit individual units every single one there's no uh, repeat build queues there's no AI management it's a lot of those things that we've now come taken take for granted just didn't exist back then now there's certain aspects of retro games which, which I could say are better for example the music in Age of Wonders is fantastic it is extremely good and uh, I just enjoy listening to it uh, the graphics are actually pretty good. The gameplay is, is good. I think there's certain aspects of the gameplay which are really nice. But be that as it may, I can also see where uh, where we've come with the genre. So I think in that sense, it is worthwhile to play retro video games. But retro video games cannot replace modern video games. In the sense that as far as regards to time commitment, if we're going to sink 40 or 60 or 70 hours, might as well put it into a modern game rather than a retro game. Unless that retro game really brings something to the table that modern video games do not. And there are some places where that is, that is true. Uh, one could look at a lot of my previous videos, particularly with regards to Guild Wars, and I've made uh, an argument that Guild Wars the original one is in many ways better or superior than Guild Wars 2. Now, they are two different things, but I could say Guild Wars 1, which is could be in a sense considered a retro video game. It was released in 2005, which is now 14 years ago. In a play mechanic sense, is better and worth the time 
the dedicated time of playing because it offers something that a modern version of the game does not offer. And that merit by itself is enough to really put in the hours of playing a retro game. So retro video games is an interesting topic. I think it's a topic that's going to continue to grow. You know, there was a major resurgence in the interest of retro video games, people collecting them. And then I think that's kind of cooled more recently, but not entirely. You know, look at the success of the NES Classic console and the Super NES Classic console. We got the Sega Genesis uh, console coming out, which a lot of people are excited for. But a lot of them tend to be people that had lived through the console generation at that time, which speaks to me that there's a major nostalgia component. Uh, people that were at the very formative time in their lives where they were in their childhood or, their, or they were in their early to mid-teenage years, uh, such as myself, when the Genesis came out, uh, I was, I think I was 14, no, when the Genesis came out, it came out in 1990, it came out before that, so uh, I was 9 or 10 when the Genesis came out. Very important of time, and I have wonderful memories of the Genesis. I have wonderful memories of the Super NES. More of the Super NES than the Genesis, I tended to lean towards the Super Nintendo side. Uh, until I got the Sega Genesis and the Sega City, and then I put a ton of hours in the Sega City, which I really enjoyed at the time, which a lot of people did. But be that as it may, and when I think of the Sega City, I think of the Sega Genesis, I think of the Super NES, there is a very much certain fondness for those consoles. And I would pretty much be the main demographic of buying those consoles and retro video games. But would I play them day after day after day? No, I can just tell you from my just day to day experience. I play modern games. I play Dota 2, EVE Online, Guild Wars. You've seen the videos and things like that. I've only have so many hours and they're not as many as, as I once had due to Mostly work responsibilities now, but also family and several others. So, there, with only so many hours in the day, I think what a lot of people have discovered is they go back and they play the retro video game and they enjoy it for a little bit, but they enjoy it for nostalgia reasons, rather than maybe what that retro video game brings to the table on its own merits. Some games are very unique. Zelda Link to the Past is, an, is a good example. Now that, you can go back and put the full time in and get a very unique experience because not many games in that genre have delivered that same similar experience. Uh, it's like the same case as going back and reading Lord of the Rings. Now that may be actually a good analogy right there. Playing a retro video game is almost in some ways like reading an old book and it could be like a very large book but like Lord of the Rings or Doom or Gone with the Wind, you know, things like that. War and Peace, you know, things that take a real, you know, chunk of time. But in the book medium of books, the books is pretty straightforward. It's letters on a page. There's not a certain sense of mechanics, that, you know, with the rest of video games. It can be kind of like going from a book of, from Papyrus to a leather-bound book to an e-reader, basically. And you miss some of that functionality. You, you kind of understand probably the, the argument I'm trying to make here, but be that as it may, I do believe that retro video games have a place. I think it's definitely an area of study that will expand and will need to continue to grow, but it should be seen as an area of study, as a rare area of enrichment, as an area of developing a understanding and a fabric among game players. So when one generation talks about Mario or uh, Zelda or Sonic or NES Hard or the original Doom and things like that. The generations following that will understand that foundation. Just as we talk about movies like Star Wars, 2001, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, Metropolis, uh, Gone with the Wind, uh, The Godfather. All those type of movies. And uh, that lays the foundation for the movie medium. But for the video game medium, you know, we may need a certain foundation as well. And 
attaining that foundation is not going to be the same as it would be for a movie. Again, it's going to be kind of the same for the books. You know, it's like reading the Iliad or War and Peace or the Bible or you know, take any take any notion of, of what you need. So anyways, I'm going to leave it here. This is kind of an open question. What do you think about retro video games? You know, is it worth the, the huge time to commitment to, to play all the way through in lieu of modern games? Or should we play retro video games to get that cultural foundation as game players that we can all share? It's kind of like a language. Or do we go back and just play them for nostalgia and then the nostalgia wears off and realize that, you know, they weren't great as once we thought once we once thought, or you know, we've moved on from them. So Anyways, it's it's an interesting topic, and maybe it's one worth exploring further. You know, which one of those three directions is it? So, anyways, I'll leave you here, guys. Again, this is Age of Wonders, released in 1997, I believe, from Triumph Studios, and it's a very good retro game. But you will sink the time, and it is complex, and it's one good example of a retro video game, which I think is worthwhile to take a look at. But as a retro game as a whole, would I play this in lieu of endless legend probably not it's a little it's a little clunky in comparison to to modern uh turn-based strategy games but that doesn't mean it's not good and it doesn't mean it's not worth a trip and particularly when you go on steam we can get these things for two bucks now it's worth the price of admission just to see where we come how far we come and um, maybe just take it around the block like an old Chevy. All right. Anyways, take care, guys. It's an open question. Let me know in the comments what you think, and uh, we'll go from there. And if there's a big interest in retro video games um, and what I may think about them, maybe I'll start doing some re reviews. I got plenty of retro games, for, uh, for particularly for consoles, in the other room. And hopefully soon I'll have my equipment here that you know, maybe I can do something with them rather than I'm just sitting in boxes. Anyways, take care, guys. I will talk to you soon, and peace out.